Hey guys, I'm here back at the park and I'm going to do the review of the Unique Breeze. As you saw in my previous video, it didn't go too well with that breeze and I sent that back to Amazon. They were really good about um, their return policy. So uh, they were able to say, okay, just to ship it back. They sent me a shipping label, I'm going to ship it back to them and then they're going to, they just they sent me a, a, another breeze and I got it on the same day. So it was, it was really fast service. Um, if you do buy it from Amazon, which I recommend, Make sure that you're actually buying it from Amazon and not one of the third parties that sell through Amazon because you're not going to get the same level of customer service if you have a problem with your breeze. Um, so I'm thinking I just got a, the reviewer's curse on these, you know, the stuff I get and I just got a bad one. It happens, you know, sometimes you get duds. So I'm um, hoping today uh, everything will work out. Got some pretty good weather today. Pretty good, uh, interesting lighting conditions here. Uh, puffy white clouds. You don't get a lot of this in California. Usually, it's usually they're all gray or all blue. So this is kind of fun. We'll have a. It'll be uh, good to see how the uh, camera and the breeze handles these lighting conditions. So it'll probably change from uh, really sunny to really dark back and forth as the sun goes from the clouds. All right, let's go. See how it goes. Okay, so it's really sunny. I'm gonna use my shadow to look at the screen here. So in the upper right hand of the screen here we got a bunch of uh, basically sensor uh, statuses and so the one that's orange there is the uh, infrared module that's looking at the bottom, there's two modules, an infrared module and a optical flow sensor on the bottom of the breeze and the one that's orange is the infrared and that one is just saying that it's too close or too far away from the ground to be able to tell what's going on. The optical flow sensor looks like it's blue which is good. The one next to that is the uh, GPS, that's blue, we got 20 satellites. The one next to that is the compass, that's also blue, so we're good. Although, uh, on the last flight it said it was blue and it let me take off and it uh, went totally nuts, so not exactly sure if we can believe that. And then the one right next to that compass is the IMU and that's also blue. And then we have uh, the Wi-Fi status that's your strength of your signal from your phone to your breeze and that's blue and it looks like it's about three quarters so we'll go ahead into the task here we're at 97 percent battery and i'm going to go into the pilot mode and there's all of these uh, tutorials that you should go through if you're uh, a first time pilot and it'll take me uh, usually have to swipe through all those screens to get past this um, but I'm going to go ahead and take off I, I believe the the controls are not reversed so uh, I have the camera facing to my left I'm gonna face it away from me I'm going to take off there we go and it's hovering pretty good Let's see if the controls are reversed or not. That's up. That's forward. So, it's, so uh, the controls are not reversed. So they, there's an icon over here on the upper left where it's like a red, I'm uh, sorry, it's a like gray R. And that's currently gray, which means it's not reversed. If you want the controls to be reversed, uh, you hit that button there and it'll slide over. I'm going to hit cancel. I, that's if you have the camera facing you. All right, I'm going to take it up. Going up fairly slow in pilot mode, so it's very stable. Very nice. Let's see if it goes. This is full down, all the way down, it's slow. I think it's, it's because the phone controls don't really have any feedback, so you, um, I don't think it's going to have a lot of, uh, uh, I guess the strength of that input isn't going to be very strong. I'm just going to tap this down, get this down here. I'm going to just get a little shot of the breeze. This one's obviously working much better. Very stable.
Yeah, I don't really like these uh, phone controls, the on-screen controls. They just don't get much much feedback. But there is a uh, Bluetooth controller that you can get for this. I think it's about $70. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. Um, it's just that uh, I think that you could also possibly use other Bluetooth controllers, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I've, I've seen some people talking about that. Yeah, this is just uh, flying around in pilot mode. If you want to line up your shots the way you like to do it. I'm just going to get some aerial of the surroundings here. And you see as I'm going up, it's also yawing. It's because where I'm touching on the screen is also part of the, uh, it's like, you can't get it exactly on the top, so you're going to touch a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, and as, as you tap, it'll go one way or, the, or another. And it doesn't look like it's letting me go any higher, but 30 feet, yeah. That's uh, I believe that's a setting in the app that you can change if you want to go higher. Let me just yaw around and get some uh, visual here. So when you tap the yaw, it's very fast. So if I tap on the upper part of the yaw here on the left, let's see if it goes slower. So that slows it down. So I'm going pretty slow here, yawing to the left. It's slowing it down even more because it's not letting me go up anymore. Let's try yawing to the right. Getting a little bit of break up in the video there. So I'm gonna. Oh, I forgot to record, so I'm gonna record this. Okay, let's see if I can yaw to the right. There we go. So I'm trying to go uh, yaw as slowly as possible. The video looks pretty stable from my perspective. Okay, let's see if we can point the camera down. That's the control over here on the left side of the screen. That's the uh, camera gimbal. So we're dragging it down. And you can see there I am. So we move over here into the field of view of the breeze. So this is all manual, uh, in pilot mode. It's very controllable, very stable. I'm messing around with the gimbal there. All right, let's bring it back up. And I'm gonna try flying it with the gyroscope. There's a button here on the right-hand side. If you press and hold that, you can use your phone's gyro to pilot the breeze. I'm gonna try and do this line of sight. And if you want to stop that, you can let go of the button and then uh, it'll go back to the controls that are on the screen. So let me give this, give this a go. And... Alright, moving it forward now. Okay, that's cool. That works. Moving it to the right. You do have to... It seems like you have to pitch over the phone quite a bit for it to finally respond. I'm at about 45 degrees and now it's finally going and it goes very slowly. So it's not going to be very uh, super jerky, but let me try this, see if I can show you. Now it's moving. We go move it back now. There we go. 
Yeah, so it does work. You let go and it goes back to the normal controls. I think I'd prefer just using the controls on the screen. Let's bring it down. Yeah, I, the screen controls are very foreign to me. I'm more used to the RC transmitter, so. Okay. Let's try, let's try the selfie mode now. Hopefully it won't blow up on me. Okay, so in order to land, you hit the land button, and it should land where you, right where it's at, and it should just there you go. Okay, so it works. So things are working pretty good. I got about 35% battery, so I'm gonna try the uh, selfie mode. So I'm going to stop that, and then go to the next mode. That's the selfie mode. So there's a set of buttons here. Um, there's a slider at the top that's for your to set your distance from the current location. The one on the right, I think that sets your height. And then you have uh, three buttons on the bottom. There's a slider in the middle that will uh, cause the camera to or the breeze to orbit around the spot that it took off from. And then there's the left uh, bottom left and bottom right buttons. I think that will do a yaw if you want to line up. Um, your image. So we'll go ahead and test those out and then I think we'll have to change the battery for the other other modes. Okay, so I'm going to take off. Alright. It's not going nuts. It's a good sign. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll increase the altitude here. As you can see here, I'm in the picture Let's uh, increase the distance a little bit, bring it back. Cool. And let's try this slider on the bottom. I think that'll orbit. Nope, that just goes back and forth. Either that or my distance is so far. Let me bring it closer. And then I'm gonna yaw it around towards me. All right, let's try, let's try a little bit. Let's try orbiting now. This is sort of manual orbit mode. And is it, it's a very wide circle. It's uh, it's much wider than I thought it would be. Let me, let me bring it closer. Let's uh, go some more here. Okay, so now that I've brought it all the way in, it's it, it's uh, orbiting not around me, but this point over here. So let me uh, actually get back into the camera view. So I think I've decreased the distance to the minimum distance. And now I should just orbit around me as I do that. Yeah, this is actually a very small circle now. Let me uh, increase it just a little. So I think setting the center point of the orbit is is a little bit tricky, but this is I'm in selfie mode, not orbit mode. So we'll we'll try that next. That seems to be working pretty well. So that's how you use these controls to set up all your modes. Low battery warning. So I'm going to go ahead and land it. and try the other battery. Okay. So far, so good. And I haven't seen the video footage on here yet, but it looks very stable, at least on the, on the phone screen. All right, so hopefully it'll still let me connect after I turn it off, because after I turned it off uh, on the other one, it wouldn't let me connect to it again, so. 
Let's uh, exit out of this. And I'm going to turn off the breeze and then swap the battery out. It's kind of nice it comes with two batteries, although the flight time is kind of short. I don't know exactly how long that flight was, but uh, I believe it's around 10 minutes. Okay. And hopefully everything will just reconnect. Let's uh, go over here. Okay, we got Wi-Fi, we have GPS, all of these things came back. Let me see if I can't change the settings in the drone settings here for the um, maximum altitude. So here we have uh, mode 1, mode 2, obviously mode 2. Alright, so distance between uh, takeoff point and default center and selfie. Orbit uh, mode and journey modes is 28.9 feet, and the maximum takeoff height is uh, 2.6 feet. So we can adjust those things later. That's probably why I was having some trouble with the uh, orbit and, and the centering of this. So I had to be at, looks like I had to be about 30 feet away. I think here you can set your maximum speed: 14.6 feet per second. And they, this is your return to home height of 65.6 feet. There we here we go. Here's the maximum height setting and maximum distance to about 290 feet and 28 feet. So I'm going to increase the maximum height so I can get a little bit better aerial. I'm going to take it up to 100 feet. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, and then we could do a compass calibration here, uh, but everything looks like it's working and so I don't want to uh, jinx it, so I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, so let's get back out of here and go into our tasks. We did selfie, let's do the orbit mode. So I'm going to actually get about 30 feet away, and it'll take off. All right, so we get a little bit of wind now coming in. Okay, so let's set our height here. Let me back up a little. I don't not think I'm quite 30 feet away. Let's try that. And let's go to our camera. So it's orbiting. Okay, so that's a pretty fast orbit there. If you just hit that button, uh, I think I'd prefer to do it manually. So I'm going to hit the record. And it's still looking at me. Uh, I, I think I better bring this. Bring it, bring it in a little bit closer. And then let's see what this does. Probably just manually do it. So it's a little bit slower versus the automated orbit. And that seems to work pretty well. So that was just me doing it manually. Let's see what happens if I uh, do that automated. So it's automated right now. And it's a lot faster. I think that's probably the maximum speed that you can set in the drone settings. Okay. So that's working pretty well. That's kind of fun.
Let's uh, exit out of this and let's try the journey mode. So, I'm gonna see if I can switch modes without landing it. So I'm going to journey mode and it, I think, it, I believe it is letting me do that. So before uh, I thought that you would have to land it, but you can just switch modes by just uh, exiting out of that current mode and going to the other mode and it'll let you do that. Okay, so I'm going to actually raise it up. And I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit. And I'm going to get center myself here. So, uh, if you wanted to go... Uh, the, the journey mode, basically, it basically sends the camera away from you. And so the more angle you have on your camera pointing down, the, the more of an angle it'll take off in terms of going up and back. If there's less of an angle, if, it's, if, it's, if the drone is lower and it's pointing straight at you, it'll go straight back. And then you can set your distance. Um, see here. And then, okay, let's record this. And I'm gonna set the distance here. Okay, so I, I well, I can't do that now. While it's recording, because I've set, there's a little slider on the bottom that says travel distance. It's only 32.8 feet, and then it, it goes that far back and then it comes right back, and then it stops recording. So I'm going to increase that distance. Let's bump that up to 72 feet, about double the distance. Let's see what the maximum would be. Well, you could send it 190 feet away. No, I don't think I want to do that. I'll just send it about 80 feet away. Let's see what that looks like. And three, two, one. And there it goes. So that's a pretty steep angle. And, and as you can see, it look, it, it's more like it's looking at the ground than anything else. But I'm turning into a little speck now. And it's coming back. Let's try that one more time with... Um, Maybe a little bit less distance and a little less angle. So what I'm gonna do, go back here to the settings, and I'm gonna bring the camera up a little bit, and I'm gonna lower my height. There we go. So now it's gonna go more of a more backwards instead of up. And I'm gonna decrease the distance. I don't want to hit that stuff behind it. Let's make it about 60 feet, 65 feet, and let's start that. There it goes. Yeah, it's, uh, looks very stable. Of course, there's not much wind right now, and, and this is obviously going to be shaking. But I think this uh, is pretty good video. This one's working very well now. So far, so good. Okay, and and there it goes, it stops recording. So that's how the journey mode works. Let's exit out of this and let's try uh, the follow me mode. Okay, so uh, here we have to uh, use uh, your two fingers on the screen, like like so. You pinch and, and zoom, and then you select yourself, and then it'll it will follow you. So. I'm going to hit the follow me, and then I'm going to select myself here, hit record, and it should follow me. Okay. It's definitely yawing. Let's go this way. Still has me in the screen, but it's not changing its direction from where it is. So I think there's a button over here in the upper left you have to hit to initiate that. Okay, so I'm going to activate that. So now it should actually follow me. So if I go towards it, it should back up. And it's not backing up. Okay. Let's see, I'm over this way. If I go far away, 
Is it changing? It's not changing its direction. So I'm not exactly sure. It is definitely tracking me with the camera and yawing, but it is not actually moving. But now it's moving. Okay, that's interesting. It's a little delayed reaction. I'm not 100% sure how that works, but now it's going the other direction. So this, this mode doesn't seem to be uh, working as well as uh, I was expecting or hoping it would. So let me move even further away. It's going left and right, but it's not coming towards me. Yeah. So I not 100% sure how this follow me mode works. Let's see what this thing on the left is doing. That's the camera, sorry. That's just the gimbal. And so now I'm out of frame now. I think it lost track of me. So let's turn that off. So that's a, uh, it's kind of a bummer. It's not really working as well as I was, I was hoping. Let's go ahead and stop that recording and exit out of this mode. Let's go back into pilot mode. And I'm going to send it up to the maximum height. I'm already down to 37% battery. So this will probably be the last test. Send it up a little higher into the wind and see how, how it handles it. I'm at about 80 feet or so. There you go, I'm at the maximum height. Let's pan the camera up. And we'll yaw around. Okay, let's do a slower yaw there. Okay, so it's a pretty good uh, view of the area around the park here. Got some pretty good lighting and some nice pretty clouds, so. I think, I, I think I'll like the video once to see it. it. Looks really good on the on the phone screen. Okay, there we go. All right, about twenty nine percent. I think I'll go ahead and end this review. Bring it back down here. So this definitely flies uh, pretty well. Obviously, I have to look at the video footage and see. You can see as it's, as I'm descending, it's in, it's going in. Sorry, it's going into its prop wash and it's it's very wobbly. Okay. Maximum speed forward. Just using up the last remaining bits of this battery at I forgot to hit record again. Oh my gosh. I wish they would just leave it constantly recording. That is a bummer. I didn't, I didn't all I have is the footage from the, from the phone recording. So I'll have to uh, see what, ha uh, what that looks like. But I'm at 70% battery and I have to land now and I have no more batteries. So that'll be the end of that. Okay, so let me share some final thoughts on the Breeze if you're considering buying that and if you're also considering buying the Mavic. Uh, first off, if you're thinking about buying the Breeze and you're thinking about the Breeze versus say the Dobby, uh, my recommendation is to get the Breeze and not get the Dobby unless you absolutely need the compact 
form factor. And that's really the only benefit that Dobby has over the Breeze is that the arms will fold in and it's, it's, a, it's very small. It'll fit in the palm of your hand. Um, but the camera on the Dobby is not uh, shock mounted like it is on the Breeze. So you get a little bit less vibration on the Breeze than on the Dobby. And the camera is also electronically uh, tiltable, whereas you have to be uh, tilted by hand. Uh, on the ground before we take off on the Dobby and the image quality on the Breeze is uh, better than the Dobby even though I haven't flown the Dobby uh, just from the reviews that I've seen on the Dobby the uh, video quality uh, looks better on the Breeze also the way that they do the uh, image stabilization um, the image on the Dobby is more cropped in than on the Breeze so you get less of a view um, but anyway, that, that's what, those are just my thoughts on the Breeze versus the Dobby. Uh, I, I don't want to get into a huge a debate about that. Those are just uh, my opinions on uh, which one's better between the Breeze and the Dobby. And I would just get the Breeze if you're thinking about those two. Because they're pretty similar in price. Um, I think even the Breeze might be cheaper than the Dobby in some places. I, the Breeze is about 350 to 400 and the Dobby uh, in some places costs more. So if you're just looking at the price and the features, which are pretty similar, definitely um, get the Breeze because it is, uh, I think, better than the Dobby. So, moving on, um, between the Breeze and the Mavic, I think, you know, it's apples and oranges, right? Uh, this is about 350 to 400, the Mavic's going to be 1,000 to 1,300 depending on what package you get and options. Um, and they're completely different tools here. I think that um, in terms of ease of use, they're both very easy to use. Uh, granted, the Mavic has a lot more features and there is a bigger learning curve to the Mavic in terms of uh, being able to take advantage of those features. But if you just want to take one of these up to take some aerial video, uh, if you put the Mavic in most of its automatic settings, you're going to get some pretty good results. And in terms of the image quality, the Mavic is far superior to the Breeze. Uh, I'll just put up a little sample side-by-side -side clip of a, some similar video I took. The Breeze uh, video is kind of on par to like say an average uh, cell phone, maybe an above average cell phone. And it does have a 4K sensor but it does crop the image down to uh, 1080p um, to get that stable, you know, the electronically stabilized video. And, of course, the video on the Mavic is stabilized via the gimbal, and so it's just going to be much, much cleaner and sharper um, between these two. Now, there, there's ways to uh, further stabilize the video on the Breeze, and I'll have another video on uh, how to stabilize your, your Breeze video to make it closer to the way the Mavic looks um, in a future video. Not on this video, it's getting way too long. Um, in Adobe uh, Premiere, so I'll, I'll show you how to do some stabilization to get some really smooth video. If you want, if you do happen to get the breeze and want to get very uh, even smoother video than what comes out of it uh, natively, and I'll have another video in the future where I'll compare the video quality uh, between these two in a little bit more detail. Now the bottom line is the Mavic video is just going to be better, but is it worth the extra $800 to get that video quality if you don't really need it? Uh, and that's really the bottom line here between these two is it comes down to what tool you want to use to capture the video to tell your story. And that's all these are. These are just flying cameras. And, that's, uh, and if, if you're you know if you're using this, uh, these tools here to make better videos for whatever purpose you have for YouTube or personal use then uh, the thing that you have to consider is which which one's better for you in terms of uh, the quality of the video and, and the, the price you're going to pay. If money is no object, then I would say you know definitely go for the Mavic. You're going to get an overall better experience. It does more, uh, has better quality video, has a lot more features, and you can grow into those features even though you may not use them initially. You're very limited on the breeze. It has uh, it's very simple, and it's actually that's to the market that they're targeting is people that don't want to learn how to fly and uh, deal with all the, the hassles of the technical stuff of, uh, of drones. They just want to throw up a camera, take some selfies, 
take a little bit of aerial video and be done with it and they want to they want to do it hassle free and quick and if you're that kind of a person then this might be the tool for you and, and it doesn't really cost that much so uh, it's really that's what it really boils down to is what do you need it for and how much are you willing to spend now if you are getting one of these things and you want to take aerial video from say a distance or if you want to send the drone further away uh, you're going to have to go with the Mavic and you're going to have to use the controller to get range. On the Breeze with the phone your range is pretty limited it's about 100 feet and then you start getting a lot of latency where your inputs don't show up on the screen in the video and then uh, you also get a lot of video breakup where the video just glitches out and you can't see what's going on. Um, I never lost control, I never had a fail safe uh, because I didn't really go that far and I would never intend to take this very far. So if your goal is to send it more than 100 feet away, uh, then you're going to have to go with the Mavic. I wouldn't recommend getting the Breeze just because, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi control, even though it's on 5.8 gigahertz, isn't that far. And by the way, if you have a phone that can only do 2.4 gigahertz on Wi-Fi, uh, usually a lot of older phones and some of the lower end phones that are coming out now don't do 5.8 gigahertz on Wi-Fi and it won't work with the Breeze, so it's something you should be aware of um, if you're going to get the Breeze and use your phone make sure you have a phone that can do 5.8 gigahertz anyway guys this review video is getting way too long and I'm rambling and going on uh, let me know if you have any questions below and I'll try and help you out as best I can I have a couple more videos uh, comparing these two in terms of like video quality and I'm also going to do a video on the uh, Breeze where uh, I'll stabilize the video in post-processing in Adobe Premiere so look for those. Um, hope you liked the video, let me know uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up if you do and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.